Well, it's martini time. And uh, let's see what the frog brings up from the pond. So this was the, uh, the news today was uh, the death of Roger Ailes. And like John Stewart, I've always been interested in Fox News. Uh, on Facebook, uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly in, in dialogue and in conversations with, uh, in an argument uh, against uh, uh, Fox News people and the mainstream media or MSNBC or CNN or all those fake news. Uh, but Fox News isn't fake. It's fair and balanced. It tells you so. And I first encountered Fox News um, back in the 1900s, 1900s, <laughs> 90s, uh, when my uh, brother-in-law and uh, his wife uh, became uh, uh, serious uh, evangelicals. Uh, uh, they used to be, uh, in their uh, younger family days, uh, you know, they go camping and water skiing and uh, uh, my brother-in-law would uh, get drunk and run around like a bull with horns on, you know, like that. And, uh, but basically just uh, party people, really, and, you know, just, uh, and then suddenly they became uh, serious evangelicals. And now I'm not, I'm not finding fault here or anything because they really believed, and they really did their. They were serious. I mean, they. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna belong to a religion, you should do it all the way. You shouldn't just give it lip service. And they didn't give their religion lip service. I mean, they became resource a resource center. So all of the uh, Christian right information was going through their uh, their house. I mean, it was a library. They had tapes. Uh, they kept up with the latest books on cults and whatever, and um, and they watched uh, TV sermons and the uh, on Sunday and uh, Pat Robertson's The Seven Hundred Club and Fox News, and that's all they watched. So Fox News and uh, TV evangelicals, and that was it. So I really became curious about. What was the connection between evangelicalism and Fox News? Uh, what was the marriage here? Why did they fit so good together? And uh, and and Fox News, uh, and it was said today, you know, uh, on one of the one of the punt talking heads, one of, one of the pundits on mainstream media, <laughs> said the two most influential people of the last. Three or four decades was uh, Steve Jobs and Roger Ailes. Now uh, they shaped American culture, and Roger Ailes really did shape American culture because he created a um, Fox News network that uh, shaped Republican politics. It gave us Trump. It gave us the uh, 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 hatred of Obama. Uh, it gave us uh, so much of the uh, uh, shape of American politics uh, through a movement conservatism. And so I just really, you know, well, why is this? Why, why, what's the connection here? Uh, because uh, um, why is Fox News kind of like a secular Pat Robertson or 700 Club? What, what is the connection? What, what makes it work? What's the operating system here? What's the key? And it seems to me that if you want to have, and when I say cult, is Fox News a cult? Now, when I say cult, what I really mean is it doesn't have to be a religious cult, uh, but a cult is a enclosed world view, like, uh, like musk ox that come together and turn out defensively to keep away the wolves or the enemy, you see. So a cult is a uh, self-protecting, enclosed reality system that no one can leave. Uh, it's foolproof. It, it's a logical enclosure that gives you uh, 
certainty, uh, security against change. Uh, it gives you um, a sense of power and belonging, and it gives you a certain well, sense of righteousness and certainty, and it also gives you uh, a fixed point, uh, something that can fix you so that you, you will, all, as long as you have that point, you can orientate yourself. It's like a North Star. Uh, you know, in other words, if you're if you're out of traveling in in the, in the desert, you have to have a fixed point, maybe a tree or a mountain. Or if everything's flat, you have to have a fixed point, or else you just I don't know where I am. There's something to be fixed, you see. So a cult has to have a fixed point. Otherwise, it just uh, fragments and everybody leaves. So the whole point of a cult, you see, is to fix you. So a cult can fix you, can fix your reality so it doesn't change and doesn't fall apart and doesn't fragment, you see. It keeps your reality hold, keeps you in place if you have an enemy. So an enemy can fix you because the enemy is out there and it's the other and as long as you are not the other, as long as you are... Uh, protecting yourself against the enemy and destroying the enemy, you're fixed. So Fox uh, like to re uh, came in and, and kind of like became a, uh, a TV um, Republican news outlet. And the GOP, uh, the Republic, uh, uh, Movement Conservative, um, after communism, uh, communism was its great enemy. But communism died, so what are you going to do? There's no enemy now. Well, they came up with the genius idea that if you make the government your enemy, and Reagan actually said that, the worst thing in the world is if the government knocks on your door and says, I'm here to help you. So, you see, this created the idea of the government was the enemy. And this kind of like went a little too far, in a way. Uh, be, you know, and so when Obama, Clinton came along, Clinton was uh, morally unfit in the Republican eyes, and Obama was racially unfit. So you got the government as the enemy, and then you got these presidents who were the personification of this evil government, and one of them is morally unfit, and the other one is racially unfit. They didn't say racially unfit. They said, you, you know, you're just your muzzle. <laughs> Or you're, you're not legitimate, you know, the birth of movement, you know. So Trump really created himself on, on creating Obama as being the enemy, the other, you see. And once you create the other, um, you, can, you can solidify your cult. And the other thing you need to create a cult, not just an enemy, you have to attract people who uh, feel a little disorientated or left out or out of power, or disenfranchised, or uh, disconnected, or they have a grievance, uh, they, were, they were in power, now they're out, and they feel the victim. So you, so you need an enemy, and you need a victim. And once you get that victim feeling, that feeling of being um, in exile, in exile from your rightly home, you see, once you have that feeling of being in exile, the disenfranchised, the kicked out, you know, once you have that feeling, then, well, if somebody can come along and say, well, I can tell you who did it to you, it's, it's the government, it's the enemy, it's this other guy, it's the immigrants, or it's the Jews, or it's the, uh, it's, it's the blacks, or it's the, uh, the Irish, or... <laughs> Whatever, once you get that victim feeling, all you have to do is just point to some enemy that did it to you, and zoom, you, you've, got a, you've got a cult. Because now, you feel the victims feel powerful. And they elect a guy who's going to take it to, who's going to bash the other guy. Who's, all they want is their guy to bash the enemy. They don't care what he does, they just want him to bash the enemy. So, uh, so Fox created a... Uh, 
a delivery system. The TV is a delivery system, just like cigarettes is a nicotine delivery system. A TV is a delivery system. Uh, it delivers advertisements and it delivers news, but TV needs to be entertaining. So it can't just deliver news like the BBC, just read the report, just read the facts. Facts are boring. You don't want facts. You want an emotional delivery system. So Fox Roger Ailes created an emotional delivery system. So he delivered meals with a little bit of anxiety on it. You know, a little spiced up. It's anxiety. And uh, everything was delivered uh, with the implicit uh, feeling that it was the government or Obama or the enemy, the other, that was, do was responsible, you see. So everything was delivered with this, with this emotional tag to it. And uh, this creates a loyal following. And it creates an identity. You know, so people identify with that because it makes them feel good. It makes them feel powerful. It makes them feel somebody's out for them. Somebody's going to bash the enemy and kick his ass. You see? <laughs> That's all you want. You want the enemy, the guy who disenfranchised you, the, the guy who took away your jobs, uh, to get his ass kicked. So really, if you don't get any more jobs, it's, that's all right as long as you're kicking ass. See, so, and so Trump came in and just personified this whole thing. You see, so uh, now it's all falling apart. Now Roger Ailes is gone. Bill O'Reilly. Oh, he was, he was the center pole of this whole operation. See, when you have enough... What you need for a cult to hold together is an authoritative persona, an authoritative male um, who has a fix-it persona, who knows the truth, who can't be badgered, who can't be uh, dethroned, who can't be argued against, who doesn't give quarter, who... who uh, uh, has balls. <laughs> right. So Bill O'Reilly was, was that kind of a persona. And, uh, and, and, the, and so Trump was, is that kind of a persona. And Roger Ailes. And the interesting thing about these three personas, boom, is that when you have a strong authoritative male persona who projects authority and balls, uh, they can't be weak. They can't uh, reveal any feminine side to themselves. That's, that is the, that, that's the sin. You can't be like Anderson Cooper. You can't be soft. You can't be understanding. Uh, you have to be hard as nails, you see. But the feminine for the man, for the male, there is a feminine inner side. You know, it's kind of like the, the other side is feminine, you know. So if that's rejected, you, you have to find your other half. So how do you find it if you're an authoritative uh, persona that you project this authority, you see? Well, you, you Roger Ailes saw that. <laughs> He surrounded himself with blonde Barbie dolls. In other words, he surrounded himself with, with blonde, beautiful women. And he got dethroned because he liked to play with them or intimidate them or possess them, you see. So the, this is where the, the authoritative male persona gets into trouble because he can't get in touch with his inner female. He has to possess other females. To have them on his arm to say, see, I got my female, you see, but it's a possession. Now, Trump does it. Roger Ailes did it. Bill O'Reilly did it, you see. Um, so this, you know, this, this, is a, this is a pattern and a, uh, um, it's not just a pattern or a problem with Fox. I mean, news is always full of... Uh, uh, somebody who's caught with their pants down in the wrong place because they tried to repress their inner nature 
and and um, had had and when you press something down, it creates an attention. It's going to have to come out somewhere. You can't hold it in. You see, it's kind of like that uh, um, X Lex commercial. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it, but 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 the doctor says to the guy, "How long have you been holding it in?" <laughs> you know, so so. So how long can you hold it in? You see, well, it has to come out. So it comes out in these different uh, secret ways, you see. And so everybody's covering up until finally the whole thing, the house of cards collapses. So I don't know if Fox is collapsing or not. Um, but something's changed. Something's in the wind. Uh, there's, there's something, there's, some wind is filling the sails here. There's something is going on. Uh, that, that's like the end of a of a, a pyramid, the end end of a um, historical cycle, uh, and it's, and when 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 historical cycles uh, collapse, it gets very confusing, and we can't really see what's going on because we're in the middle of it. So maybe in ten years from now, we can look back and say, ah, oh, well, you could see what was going on because. There will be a different wind blowing, you see. But this authoritative, male, um, rigid, uh, ballsy kind of guy that, the, that many people want to be the leader, that's why they like Putin. Well, oh, Putin's better than Obama, because he's got balls. You see, Obama um, was, was not that uh, authoritative, certain kind of guy, you see. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just thought I would share this with you because really, you know, for decades, we've all been in, uh, you know, one, how Fox News and uh, the, the loyalty people have towards it. Uh, I can understand that, you know, uh, because it does, Fox News had a particularly, it created a viewpoint. And that was Roger Ailes' genius. He created a viewpoint. Uh, for a population, and when you're in that viewpoint, you see reality a certain way. And nobody can convince you any differently because that's what the enemy does. They're going to try to convince you. And see, this is how religion fits in so closely to it, you see. Because Christian the Christian Christianity is kind of like a religion for the exiles. In other words, you go back to the garden. So Adam and Eve got exiled from the garden, and mankind has been wandering ever since, looking for its true home. Can't get back in. God hid the gate. Put a cherubim there with a sword. You can't find your home. So we're exiled. Just like the Jews got exiled from Jerusalem. By, you know, so they've been wandering, the wandering Jew. Well, the wandering Christian picks up this story too. So we're all in exile. So whenever anybody offers you paradise, in your true home, and all you do have to do is believe it and identify with it, um, it's a false paradise. But there is this longing inside of us for this home, for this true nature, for our home, like we've been lost, you see. And Roger Ailes tapped into that. He, this is, this is the, the flaw in, my, in modern my, modernity, the modern world is that it's all fragmented, you see. There's no center viewpoint, particularly in America. We're all just immigrants coming in, coming in, everybody brings their own viewpoint, it's all mixed up. It's a big Brunswick stew. And a lot of people want their plate divided into, I want some meat here, and I want some potatoes there, and some vegetables there, and I don't want it all mixed up. I don't want a stew, you see. <laughs> I want to know where everything is. I want everything to have a place, you see. And so when everything's mixed up, uh, when you want everything to have a place and to be certain, and you can feel certain, you see, then there is a longing for somebody who will make it all straight and put everything in their place. You get the women over there, you get the blacks over there, you got the Mexicans over there, and you got the white people there, and everybody's got their place, you see. And now the world is back in its original order. Well, not the original order. <laughs> but anyway, you can see this, this sense I'm trying to feel here. And, and again, 
this is not to bash Fox, it's basically just talk about what is going on, you know, and what's the operating system here? How does that work? Um, and so we're going through a very, you know, a passage now um, with, with Trump who, was, who got elected as the fixer, the guy with balls, the one who uh, could not be, uh, just un nobody could unseat him, all the, left, all the debates, you know, he, he won because nobody could outfox him. And uh, so he got elected because he could outfox everybody. That's what he meant by I, I'm the deal maker. The art of the deal means I can outfox you. But you see, it's not working out the way he thought, and he's having a great deal of distress, we understand, because nothing is working. He's all bogged down, you see, in his own footsteps. But anyway, I just wanted to share this, my, my views on Fox, uh, because um, it is a phenomenon, and its founder uh, just died, and um, so Fox has to reorganize itself now that its tentpole, Bill O'Reilly, is gone, and uh, Trump is in, uh, is, is uh, falling in, in uh, uh, bad favor by his support by the, by the GOP, um, and uh, so we'll see how it goes. So thanks for, for uh, dropping in and sharing uh, my observations.